from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Hello and welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I'm Father John Berteo. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contributions from three donors. The first is an anonymous donor from Guelph, Ontario, in loving memory of her parents, grandparents, brothers, and her friend Jean. The second is John O'Connor and family from Oliver, British Columbia, in thanksgiving for blessings received and in memory of Jenny, loving wife and mother who died on August 21, 2017. The third are the Knights of Columbus from St. Joseph Assembly from Edmonton, Alberta, in support of the Daily TV Mass. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass that we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins as we prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries and ask for God's healing in our lives. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father and you are deceived for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, Fill your faithful with holy joy, for on those that you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. Absalom happened to meet the servants of David. Absalom was riding on his mule. Hmm and the mule went under the thick branches of a great oak. His head got caught fast in the oak, and he was left hanging between heaven and earth, while the mule that was under him went on. A man saw it and told Joab, I saw Absalom hanging in an oak. Joab took three spears in his hand and thrust them into the heart of Absalom. Now David was sitting between the two gates. The sentinel went up to the roof of the gate by the wall, and when he looked up, he saw a man running alone. The sentinel shouted and told the king. The king said, If he is alone, there are tidings in his mouth. He kept coming and drew near. Then the sentinel saw another messenger running. The, the king said to the first messenger, Turn aside and stand here. So he turned aside and stood still. Then the Cushite came, and the Cushite said, Good tidings for my lord the king, for the Lord has vindicated you this day, delivering you from the power of all who rose up against you. The king said to the Cushite, Is it well with the young man, Absalom? The Cushite answered, May the enemies of my lord the king and all who rise up to do you harm be like that young man. The king was deeply moved and went up to the chamber over the gate and wept. And as he wept, he said, O oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, would I had died instead of you. O oh, Absalom, my son, my son. It was told to Joab, the king is weeping and mourning for Absalom. So the victory that day was turned into mourning for all the troops. For the troops heard that day, the king is grieving for his son. The troops stole into the city that day as soldiers steal in who are ashamed when they flee in battle. The word of the Lord.
gracious to me, O Lord, for to you do I cry all day long. Glad in the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Listen. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus had crossed in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the, by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet and begged him to, re- repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be made well and live. So Jesus went with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had. And she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him and and in the crowd and touched his cloak, for she said, If I but just touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately the the hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately, aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about and said to the crowd, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say, Who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing who had, what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him, and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, your daughter is dead. Your trouble, why trouble the teacher any further? But over, over, overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, Jesus saw a a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When Jesus had entered, he said to them, why are you making a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, tefillakum, which means, little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was about 12 years of age. At this, they were overcome with amazement. 
Jesus strictly ordered them not to, not to tell no one that this should, Jesus strictly ordered them to, that no one should know of this and told them to give her something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Long, <laughs> but beautiful. Sometimes I get the tongue twisted with all the beautiful words, but uh, I, I think you sort of got the message. And if you didn't, here's just a little brief, just a little brief of the beautiful reasons we just heard. So I ask you, have you, during any time in your life, have you been asking God for something in particular, such as a healing, a healing for a loved one, or perhaps even for yourself? Today's readings then offer proof that the healing power of God is very real, and it's still around us today. So I share with you a short reflection from one of my sources, and I quote, Today we hear a great story of faith, a woman with a hemorrhage whose name we do not know. She approaches Jesus with a need and the faith that she can heal. She approaches in secret, but receives the healing she seeks in secret. So nobody really knew. So we ought to be inspired as well in our own lives by the testimony of how our faith can make us well. Faith, very, very key. Faith to make us well. We uh, may not all receive a physical healing, and that's really important to remember. But when we approach our Heavenly Father uh, with our needs and petitions, he hears and answers us, especially when it's for someone else. And we hear so many saints through our lifetimes praying for others, not for themselves, but for others, for them, for the Lord to intercede with them, and many, many of them got healed. See, truly, our faith can make us and those for whom we pray can make them well. Believe, really believe and be surprised. From my childhood, I was always taught by my parents, God bless them, that I should believe in the truly presence of Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. And practicing that over the years and over and over the years, it more and more and more do I believe, and I speak about it openly, about the really true presence of God. And of course, every time I celebrate the Eucharist, or every time I attend the Eucharist, wherever I might be, I always pray, especially when the priest raises the Blessed Sacrament. I always pray the words of St. Thomas, my Lord and my God. And I, in addition to that, I ask him, Lord, I believe. Heal my unbelief. Because I'd love to believe a thousand percent if there's such a thing. But I want him to heal my little bit of unbelief so that I may have total, complete, and unquestionable faith. Dear friends in Christ, for us, our faith is not perfect. <laughs> Welcome aboard. But if we allow it, it can be improved. It can grow provided that we are open to it. And God is prepared to heal us whether it's physical or otherwise. And again, for those we pray for, are you looking for a miracle? Do you truly, truly believe that God can and we'll do it. Do you have enough faith for that? In a few moments, I'll be raising up the Blessed Sacrament. For those of you who are watching virtually, it's not just a figure in the television screen. Truly believe that he is with you right there at that moment. There's no borders. There's no time restraints with God. He's always with us. Thus, this televised daily mass is for you who want to increase your faith in our Lord. And again, as I raise the Blessed Sacrament, just say, my Lord and my God. Surprise yourself. Open your heart. Believe, believe, believe. And one day you'll see the fruits. Maybe not on this earth, but in the one to come. 
May God bless you and heal you and those for whom you pray. Amen. Let us pray. For all those in our daily TV Mass Prayer Intentions book, we pray for you. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In a month dedicated to the holy name of Jesus, we pray as a community of faith that his name will bring peace and reconciliation to our families and the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of those who are struggling to believe that God is present in our lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For each one of us gathered here for this Eucharist, this Eucharistic celebration, the sacrament of healing itself, that our faith grows stronger each and every day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For family members and friends who still don't believe in the healing power of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who still don't believe in the true presence of Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, that may they open their hearts to one day believe, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the intercession of our Blessed Mother who totally believed, we pray, Hail Mary, full Lord, of grace, the, the Lord, Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for with you can this receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Let us be forever. To the mystery of this water and wine, may you come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for with you can receive the wine we offer you, fruit to the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash my iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. May this oblation dedicated to your name, your purify us, O Lord, and by, day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, and eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son, you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, and all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too exalt you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For to your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, your pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, o Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, grace to make all these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. 
for on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his once resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make, a, may he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain and inherit with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, with spouse, with blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on this constant intercession, we rely for your unfailing help. May this sacrifice of a reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm with faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Francis, our Bishop, the order of bishops and all the clergy, and the entire people who have gained for our own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you've summoned before you in your compassion. O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind and minister your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art, art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, you pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's pause for a moment and open our hearts to the faith that Jesus does heal. When the time is appropriate, when the time is appropriate he will have faith and peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, Lord I am not worthy to shed my roof. My roof but only say the word, and my soul shall be. May the body of Christ meet to everlasting life. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Grant your prayer, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass has been celebrated. Let us go forth in the peace and love of Christ. Thanks, thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass.